move on to our next session realizing celebrity i'll request jyoti kamal ji to welcome our next guest ahana kumra ahana kumra is an indian feature film and tv actress she is known for her small screen debut in yudh where she played amitabh bachan's daughter a versatile actress she is praised for her character leela in prakash jha production lipstick under my burkha directed by alankrita shrivastava let's begin with the uh, session over to you jyoti kamal thank you arshi thank you ahana for taking the time out we were not expecting that you will be able to make it but here you are so thank you so much <laughs> you are not somebody who was like born into the film industry you are not like somebody who was from the film industry in terms of family lineage or anything and yet you kind of chose to get into movies and into the whole glitz and glamour of bollywood how was your journey because you you had your ups and downs you had your initial pitfalls and here you are an absolute confident poised uh, person now who knows the industry in and out what was your initial experience like First of all, I'd like to thank you, Jyoti, sir, for having me here, and thank you, Network 18. I'm very delighted to be in Chandigarh. I think I'm back in this absolutely fabulous city after, um, I think, three or four years. I came pre-COVID because I was doing a show called Kalami Blue, which was with um, the Indian women's cricket team, and I was in Moga uh, to uh, interview Harman Preet Kaur and her family. And I was in Chandigarh briefly because this is where she trained. and uh, really happy to be back here so thank you so much and i'd like to say thank you to niharika who's sitting right there she's a friend of mine um hi guys um chandigarh is a really beautiful city um i think one of my favorite cities because it's really well planned and i love coming back here as actors we are very very lucky and very fortunate that we live many lives we travel to many cities we get to meet so many people and i was so happy to see the dynamic ladies who were sitting right here with their absolutely wonderful stories sometimes i feel um, i think we're really lucky that we attend summits like these that we get to hear such incredible stories because i think in bombay we live in a bit of a cocoon hamare wahan ya to fir aapko sirf film stars milenge film wale log milenge theater ke log milenge so it's really nice to sometimes come here and listen to these stories because you actually realize how incredible uh, you know all of india is and what kind of work people across this country are doing uh coming back to my journey so no i'm not from a film family uh my mother's a police officer she has been in the police for 40 years she's dsp up police my father works in a pharmaceutical industry he used to work for lupin laboratories and he lived most of his life in russia so i grew up in a very fiercely independent women oriented home uh, i have an elder sister uh, who is an equally inspiring and i don't think both of us have ever been brought up like women like girls we were always like literally kicked out of the house and be like jao ja ke gymnastics seekho jao swimming seekho ye seekho wo seekho so i think straight from the word go i was always since a child i was doing things that i think most boys were doing i have played all sorts of sports i was always thrown into the football team or the swimming team or running team so i was always out in the mud fighting the boys um so i think that fierce independence comes from there i came to bombay in 97 when i was in 7th standard and uh, i finished 3 years of schooling here and then i joined this really wonderful place i don't know if any of you all have heard of prithvi theater yeah, of which is yeah so prithvi theater was my it's my home like my second home and maybe home to many many actors in mumbai because hum log jo film family se nahi aate hum log theater se shuruaat karte hain to meri shuruaat theater se hi hui hai and uh, i joined the prithvi theater i met shashi ji there he was the first person who ever felicitated me after a theater workshop of 12 days and i kind of realized i think that was I, i think i must have been 14 and i was like literally in like these purple color spandex and pigtails and braces and you know not knowing what the world of glitz and glamour is because when you don't come from film families the kind of grooming that i see these young girls these 15 14 12 year old girls have where mothers are like beta ye mat karo yahan kharoch aa jayegi ya aise mat karo tum kali ho jaogi we were never told those kind of things because i came from a family where my masses are all police officers 
So I've grown up in a Kotwali, where I saw criminals getting beaten up, where I saw people getting jailed, where I saw like my mother speaking to a criminal or interrogating people in a way that I think very few, so I was never like pampered. So I didn't know it better. So I think we have eaten a lot of food before I really, uh, you know, kind of uh, jumped into the film world. I did theatre and I continue to do theatre. And uh, I was really lucky that my first break was, was, was with, with Mr. Bachchan and uh, Anurag Kashyap saw me in a play. And, um, you know, and he was just like, I was at Aram Nagar, which is one of the places where most casting directors are in Mumbai. And I was just offered a role um, opposite Mr. Bachchan. And that time I didn't know anything about how the film world works. So I think I, I probably have just been really fortunate with the kind of work that I've been doing. So I don't think like I choose films. I think the cinema that I've been doing has chosen me. You were, like you said, you were from a family where there were a lot of very strong lady police officers. And then you kind of went to Bollywood, you kind of got your big breaks, you made it on your own. But it wasn't like all an easy ride in terms of the fact that um, it's, it's, it's not as rosy or as clean and clear as one would probably imagine. And that probably was a bit of a bump for you in terms of uh, how all of that played out. Were you kind of prepared to handle that? And, and coming from a police family, you must have thought that, okay, my mom is a cop, nothing can ever happen to me and nothing can go wrong with me. I mean, I can always take her name. But it wasn't the case. In fact, there was a low phase of your life. What was that about? Well, I guess uh, nobody's ever prepared, especially in the world of glitz and glamour. It all looks very nice and beautiful, but nobody knows that sometimes we put in 48 hours of work. Sometimes you have to work 48 hours, sometimes you have to work 24 hours, sometimes you have to work at home, sometimes you have to go to home, sometimes you have to sleep in vanity. Mein sote hai. Uh, so it's a very difficult world and uh, I wasn't fully prepared for it because I didn't know. When you came from Lucknow, when I came from Lucknow, um, and I come from a family where everybody's either in a corporate or like is in the armed forces. So, no army, no navy, no police, no advocate. Hai. So, you know how it is. Like, it was always a set thing that you will UPSC exams, then you will IS officer, then you IPS officer. Ban so, it was a very like straightforward way and, you know, path for me which was kind of paved by my parents and they had a certain vision for me. But when I came to Bombay and I started doing theatre, I think that's when my mother realized ki, you know, maybe this is what you want to do because I never attended a single lecture in college. My principal, I was like the ghodi in the college, you know, like the one who knows the, the winning trophy wali ghodi. I was like that person, you know, my, my, my principal, Indu Shahani. She would like just let me be. She, I'd never appear in the blacklist because I was always winning trophies for college. So I think somewhere deep down, everybody around me knew that I wanted to be in I wanted to act. Does acting mean primarily films or cinema? I don't think so. I think there's also a world of theater, which is what I was very fortunate to have. And I still have it because I think even today, when I feel very low and I feel like, okay, you know what, cinema is not really doing the kind of work that I want to do or the kind of cinema I want to be associated with. I go back to theater. Uh, so coming to my, uh, the phase that you spoke about, uh, I think all actors go through that because when you have rejections every day of your life, when you're told, ki, you know what, you don't look good. You say in your mouth that you look good, you look very big, 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 you look very big. So there are many, many things that many times when I remember I used to do scenes, my actor was told that you look very big, you look very big, you look very big. You know, things like that happen. And you get rejected bases, your height, you get rejected basis the way you look. You get rejected the, the basis the way you think or talk. If you have an opinion, you should keep your mouth shut because sometimes that's not appreciated because they don't want women who are fiercely independent. They don't perhaps want women who speak their mind. But there was a phase when I felt that I was not getting the kind of work I wanted to do because I did a very, very interesting film. I did a film called Lipstick Under My Burkha, yes, of course, yeah. which was my first that. film. And that film is about four women in small towns. So it was me, Ratna Pathaksha, Konkana Sen Sharma, and an absolutely wonderful Assamese girl called Plavita. And we shot in Bhopal. The film was produced by Prakash Jha and uh, eventually distributed by Ekta Kapoor. And then we had a 
very long fight with the Supreme Court because they had banned the film in India. And uh, the film had already traveled to five countries. And I went to attend the first premiere in Tokyo. And I still remember, I was at the Tokyo Film Festival. We were walking the red carpet. And there was Meryl Streep walking right ahead of me with Shinzo Abe, who was the then prime minister. And this was the first time I was attending any premiere of any film that I had ever done in my life. We didn't even know what clothes should we be wearing at a premiere. We didn't have stylists, we didn't have makeup artists, we did our own makeup. We wore whatever clothes that I could get. There's a market called Manish Market in, in uh, Andheri. And if anybody's aware of Bombay, there's a market called Manish Market. And I still remember I had got a gown stitched. And at the red carpet, somebody asked me from the Tokyo media, uh, the Japanese media, they asked me, who are you wearing? <laughs> you know, we are not wearing a Ritu Kumar, I'm not wearing a, you know, a big brand. At that time, I was just like, oh, I'm wearing Manish <laughs> Malhotra. And then somebody behind was like, Malhotra? And I'm like, no, 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 like Manish Market, <laughs> you know. I got my own gown stitch. So I think like, these are the things that we learn. And I'm really proud of the fact that Although that low phase was there, because I, I didn't think I was getting the kind of cinema. Uh, when the film premiered, I still remember when the film premiered in Tokyo, there was pin drop silence. So the Japanese audience is not like us, where we go like roaring laughter. You know, Indians are like, Khule dil ke. They go like, they laugh loudly, they cry loudly, but that's how we Indians are. And I still remember there was pin drop silence. And then... There was a long line of these women waiting to take photographs with us. So they were taking a photograph and there was this one particular lady who came and she just like hugged my director, Alankrita Srivastava, and she started crying. And for the life of me, I could not understand what was happening. And I was like, what, what, what is happening? Why is this woman crying? So then the Japanese translator told us that that woman told her in Japanese, how did you know our story? I could not believe I had goosebumps. Here I am in Tokyo, in one of the most advanced countries of the world. And there is this woman who comes to us, hugs my director and says, how do you know my story? Our film was made in Bhopal, in a small town in India. How did that story relate with somebody in Tokyo? That's when the penny dropped for me that the stories of women all across the globe are the same. Whether you are in America, whether you are in England, you could be in Tokyo, you could be anywhere across, you could be in Iceland, Norway, the stories remain the same. And that's when I realized that, you know what, I don't think I have a different story. I think women across the board, across the country, are facing misogyny, patriarchy in some way or the other. And I think that's given me hope. And that's given me strength to be, I think, the woman that I am today. Fantastic. In fact, like you had mentioned this earlier also, that these are not stories that are confined to India. These are global stories. And the fact that you highlighted them and that you had a Japanese come up to you and say that, how did you know our story? So, yeah, of course. But, but, the, but the fact is that you emerged from all of this. You came out much stronger. You went through your low phase that's behind you. And I mean, what would your advice be? What would, what would be the lesson? Because when you were in that low phase, you would have probably felt that it's just going to be like this forever now. Am I going to get out of it at some point in time? But now it's the past. So now, now you have kind of moved on to a confident future. So when you look back at that, what is the advice that you would like to give people? How, how do you kind of tell them to hold on? How do you tell them to be resilient? How do you tell them to kind of make their way out of that phase? That phase will be over. It's not something that's going to be forever. But how do you convey that message? through your own experience, through your own lived experience? I think the one rule or the one thing that I have always lived by is the show must go on. And that is something that I think every artist kind of swears by. And life goes on. And this too shall pass. I think these things I learn every day. So I'm, when I'm, I'm, I'm here as an actor, but I probably will meet somebody who's from like a different industry altogether. And you know, I'll, I'll learn something from them. And I think the most important thing that we don't do in our lives is, our, is that we close ourselves to learning. We should not stop learning. As people, as human beings, I can learn from an animal. I can learn from a person. I can learn from somebody who's, you know, who's really young. I can learn from a mother. I can learn from a father. There's so many places I can learn from. 
So I don't think we should be close to learning. And I think the only advice I will give to anybody who wants to make it in the film industry or to anybody who wants to be in the media industry, because this is a very, very harsh industry, and you may know this because you're in the media. And anybody who's in the media knows how harsh and how ruthless and how brutal our industries are. We should never stop learning, and this too shall pass. I think I always believe that the next day is going to bring something wonderful, and that happens. I think you need to just have that faith and kind of hold on to that. Uh, there are many times in our industry when I think we've all also got very lucky with the OTT. Uh, yes. I think that's something that I, I would like to... I was just going to ask you about that, that OTT suddenly is an option now. I think and, I'm and, just like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and when you look at that kind of business now, and you look at that whole opportunity, yeah. is it also kind of moving into that whole film kind of line in terms of uh, that also becoming selective, that also having those same lineages, or does it still have that freshness to it? No, I think when the OTT began, you're absolutely right. When the OTT began, I remember I did this one very interesting show called Chukya Giri. And that show was on YouTube. And Anand Tiwari, the guys who've made Bandish Bandits. Mm. I don't know how many of you all have watched Bandish Bandits. So my friend Anand Tiwari, who also is a very dear friend who does theatre with me. He made this absolutely wonderful show called Chukya Giri. And uh, I remember I had gone to Baroda for a play. And somebody came to me and she was like, hey, Rati. And I'm just like... I just looked around, I'm just like, is she talking to me, <laughs> you know? And uh, I was like, how did you, where have you seen this? And she's like, it's on YouTube. And I said, what, really? And I'm talking about that time when YouTube was not like YouTube what it is today. Uh, I'm talking 2016. And, and I was like, where did you watch this? And she was like, I watched it on YouTube. And I was like, really? Is it that popular? So I feel that, you know, when, when OTT began, TVF was really small. TVF was just doing skits. And today, look where TVF is. Uh, we were all doing very interesting shows. We were telling very fierce stories. And I am very proud to be a part of the OTT because I think I have managed to be a part of some incredible shows like Betal, which has been produced by Mr. Shah Rukh Khan. And, you know, and, and, and the show called Marzi, which also spoke about uh, uh, violence against a woman's body. And I think it was an absolutely wonderful show. It was very ahead of its time. So there are many, many interesting shows that I did and a lot of my friends did. And, I, and these are my friends who are doing theater, like Jaydeep, or for that matter, Gulshan, or for that matter, Jim Sarb. You know, the guys who've all become really popular today. Rasika Duggal, Rajshri Deshpande. These are some incredible names. These people would have been nowhere had OTT not come into being. A trial by fire would have not been made today. Uh, Delhi crime would have not been made today. Anybody remember Shefali Shah from Monsoon Wedding? She was an incredible Monsoon Wedding. And then suddenly you see her in Delhi Crime. And there she goes to win the Emmys and, you know, and like the shows winning multiple uh, awards, you know, internationally. And then there is a Netflix and then there is an Amazon and then there is a Z and a Sony and everything comes into play. But now suddenly we see that the same hierarchy that was happening in cinema is happening in OTT where suddenly all the film stars have suddenly realized that, you know what, this is a great comeback for me, so I'm going to do a show, and that show is going to revolve around me, and everybody else is going to be like a second lead or a third lead. So I think the same pattern that was happening in cinema is now suddenly happening in the OTT. So I, I do see that. But does nepotism kind of bother you, or you think that like a business person's um, ch child might kind of get into business, somebody else can kind of take up that same line? So why not in the movie business also? Why is this kind of critically kind of spoken about each time around. What's your take on it? I mean, are you okay with it? What do you think? Should it be? Should it not be? <laughs> this is a deep question and a very difficult one to answer. <laughs> I think, um, okay, so coming to the fact that when I was little, I remember that in my school, mein, I was in Lamartnia Girls College, and I still remember that in my school, mein, mein classmates thi, they were all daughters of doctors. And every time I would ask them, what do you want to be? They would all say doctor. And today they're all successful doctors. And there are many, many, like, if you come from a business family, you can't just leave your business. Because your fathers, your forefathers have taken that kind of pain to become those people, to, to build an industry, to build a name in that industry. So I don't see anything wrong with nepotism. But does that come in the way of our work? Yes. Does that disallow me to put a foot in, in the door? Yes, it does. Does that stop me... If I'm going to have a daddy call up a production house or a producer and say, hey, you know what, drop her 
and take my daughter instead, that is a problem. I am not at all opposed to the fact that these children should be given opportunities. In fact, I feel it's tougher for them because when your father or your mother is so successful in an industry that they've probably broken their back to be a part of or be successful in that industry. It is very, very difficult to be able to build your name. And I can tell you at least three or four very, very successful film family kids who have not been able to make it in the industry. So I feel that opportunities should not be grabbed away from the people who, are, who call themselves outsiders. I still call myself an outsider because I, I, I feel like I'm still trying to figure the industry. You know, it's, it's not an easy industry to, to uh, kind of figure out where you want to put your foot. But I feel like nepotism is there. It's always going to be there. I hope our opportunities are not grabbed away by these daddies, papa ki paris and you know, whatever <laughs> that I could call them. Uh, I hope we get equal opportunities and I hope, I sincerely hope that the OTT really continues to doing what it started out to do. Give equal opportunities to actors who have been probably standing in the wings for years waiting for that one that one opportunity that's going to let them shine. Anna, so good to hear your strong story. That was so inspiring. Thank you so much for being Thank a part so of much, Flash Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much Ahana. Thank you, Jyoti Kamalji. Please stay on the stage. I'll now request editor News 18 India and News 18 JKLH to felicitate Ahana Kumra. Thank you so much, Ahana. Jyoti Kamalji, please stay on the stage. I'll now request 